God is so glorious. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, anybody want to give a testimony for the glory of God? Anybody want to be a witness? Yes. I title it. You do. Well, Brother EBA, I don't mind coming down to you. I'm coming. I'm coming. We're just about there. Praise the Lord. I think I'm going to come forward. You sure? I'll come with you. Um, the devil thought he's got me, but the more he tries, the more he finds out that I'm a very terrible man to hold. <laughs> um, you want to go up or down? Yeah, I'll go up. Okay, one I'll step. Next step. There you go. There you go. All right. Glory. Now let's turn around and face who you're talking to. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I just want to thank the Lord because um, it's been a, a terrible battle for the past one and a half years or more than one and a half years. But the one thing I find is God has been giving me the strength to hold on to and to hear about divine energy this morning. Uh, it's just like I, I, I just hold it up to God and say, Lord, yeah. uh, if you were not there for me at my trying times, it would have been all over for me. This is when people go into depression mm -hmm. and then just maybe shut themselves down. But for me, it's just a time of just reflecting, listening to the word and finding strength and patience. And um, I tell you, God has been pouring in his revelation in my life too. Yes, to he give has. me the grace to stand. It hasn't been easy. I'm just here to say the devil is a liar. Yeah. I'm also here to say that um, this morning I woke up with these thoughts. Um, the prophet talked about uh, the right mental attitude yes. to every divine promise. Yes, yes. Surely bring it to pass. Amen. And I was just thinking, I said, Lord, yeah, what is that right mental attitude? He said, just think the word to be truth. Confess it. Yeah. Believe it. Amen. Keep walking. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So I, I stand on that. And then I'm telling the devil, it's a liar. Yes, it's sir. A liar. He can't hold me back. Amen. I've been set free. You know, you know um, the Bible says something in John 8, 32. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, um, say, whosoever the Son of Man has set free mm -hmm. is free, free indeed. indeed. And then he also say, um, um, you shall know the truth. Yes, sir. And the truth shall set you free. That's what I want. And if you look at the Bible, Jesus said, I'm the truth. And we have Christ, the truth, in this hour. So there's no reason why I should not be set free. Amen. So I'm standing yes, for that freedom. Amen. And I'm claiming it in the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. And then um, I also want to thank everybody for your prayers. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, Satan, it's, it's a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. You're under my feet. You've been defeated. Yes, I've been set free. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stand here one day Preaching. and read my Bible again. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It's, it's not by my power. Mm -hmm. It's not by my mind. No, it's by His Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. 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 And I also want to tell <laughs> Sister Ella. Ella, it's okay. We'll be fine. Yeah. The enemy is under our feet. He's under our Amen. Feet. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Take you right down here. Musicians, why don't you come? We're going to have a little a couple of songs. Anybody else want to give God the glory? You do, Joe? Come on up. Succinct and to the point. Because we've got a few that want to raise their hand and give God the glory. Here's a lovely young man. Amen. I just want to, it's a short testimony. So before, I think it was Saturday morning, I was sitting with uh, some of uh, the other brothers, like Abraham and Dan, and we were talking about like a very sobering 
uh, topic of missing the rapture. And I think Brother Ron Spencer had a vision or something. And he saw, like, uh, it was a very sobering moment. So he went to the service really, really focused. And I remember at the end of the service, I was just praying. And I saw Brother Andrew Spencer. And I was like, I, I need to go and at least, like, grab a hold of him and pray. And just, you know, confirm myself. And so I went and I, I grabbed a hold of him. He was just so, so tired. But I was like... I'll be holding him up, and we'll be praying together. And uh, right, when, right when I grabbed a hold of him, and he, he turned to me, and he said, I know you're a believer. And for myself, it was just like we prayed, and I, I told him my, my requests and things. We prayed, but just to hear that like the Spirit in me is agreeing with the Holy Spirit that's around him. Mm -hmm. For me, that was a huge confirmation Amen. and Amen. just brought a lot of peace into my life. So. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Lar Lar. Do you want to say something? Yes, I thought you would. Thank you. God bless you. So God's been dealing with me since I was super little and, you know, always been fighting every single day, right? Because I came from a different, uh, I came from a tribe and it's a little bit different here, right? So I came and I was struggling with the language English, which I'm still struggling with every day. And uh, despite anything, God is always telling me, like, these are just trials that you're going to go through, but it's going to make you stronger. And this is the, this is the thing, though. Even, even then, when I was so little, I always knew I had a God, right? Yes, sir. That, that is Jesus. That's it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I never had a doubt, even on the worst days that I have, since I was little, I always went to God. I was like, God, you know, today might not be the best day, but it can be a day where I'm learning something new. And it's, some, it's a day where, like, it's a struggle, but it's okay, right? We, it's just we have to change our perspective, right? Yeah. Like, we tell uh, ourselves, like, if someone says something bad to us, we're always thinking about the one little bad thing. But... Come on, God has given us so many good things. Why, why are we, like, sad about that, right? <laughs> right? So, grew up struggling all that stuff, but I was never, I was, ne I was never, I get down, but it's okay, though. I always get back up, because I know my God, that's it. And, and he was telling me, it's like, I have to go somewhere. I just have to leave home. It's not, it's not, this place is not for you yet. And, and you know. There comes a time where I was thinking, I was like, oh, what is this feeling that I'm just, I want to leave. So I, I took my bag and I left. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't tell my mom, like, you know, I didn't tell where my mom, like, I, where I was going. But my mom knew where I was going because she was always praying for me, right? But I was just needed to find God. That's what it was. Find, find the place where I belong. And, and I was a lost sheep. That's what it was, sure. right? And, and through that, I just went and then finally... You know, I met a brother, Jariah. You guys all know him. He's always, he's awesome, right? And he told me to come out here. He's like, oh, you should come out. And I was, I, was, I was searching. I was hungry. I was thirsty for God, right? I read the Bible every, every time in the morning. And I'm just like, God, just reveal the words to me. I was lost. I didn't understand. But every time I came to one of the services, God has revealed a new thing for me every single time, yeah. right? And then I came and to the camp, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful it is, right? That was probably my first camp, and I know I'll, I'll, I will remember that for the rest of my life, right? Amen. Just God doing his blessings to everybody and, you know, people praising the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. But, you know, and then that's all I got to say. You know, you can come from anywhere, whatever your background is, God will deal with you individually. And when he works with you individually, you know that God is there for you all the time, every day. He is the same today, yesterday, Amen. every day. Amen. That's Amen. Amen. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to give testimony in my life because, as you know, I've been hearing the message all my life. Uh -huh. 
And uh, I, I never gave my heart to Christ. I was always holding something back. And um, I always lived the message as a rule of do's and don'ts, right. which we've heard in the services is, is what we're not supposed to do. We want it to be alive in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And um, so one thing that I've never said to anybody is I've, been str I've struggled with music for years, mm -hmm. wrong music, worldly music. And uh, February camp, I was delivered from that. Oh my. But that was the symptoms. That was not the inside. I didn't have that real experience with God yet. Mm. And uh, come May, I fell back into that pattern. I fell back into that music. And I, I got delivered a bit from it again in the young peoples on music. But again, it was just the symptoms. Sure. So when, uh, a metaphor that I was thinking about is when you're gardening and you have a weed, Mm -hmm. You pull up the roots. Mm -hmm. You don't uh, just clip off the flowers because it's going to grow again. The weed will come back. So that's when I came into camp. That's what I wanted it, for God to come inside, to change me from the inside to the outside. And that's what he did. And he spoke to me and he said, uh, I think it was the Thursday service. And the Thursday service. And he was talking about how uh, the door, Jesus is knocking on the door, right? Yeah, and yeah. the door doesn't have a handle. Right. You have to let him in. <laughs> and I think I had approached this experience from the wrong thing. I've come to God before, and I've said, Jesus, change me. But I didn't take that step to letting him into my heart. I was expecting him to break through the door, break through the window, and sure. be like, here you go, you're a Christian now. But you have to kind of step forward, and, you know, I say, I surrender. So... Thank Jesus. And there's this one scripture that I, I just want, felt on my heart uh, that came to me during camp. And this is just in closing for me. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> so Romans 8, verses 15 and 16. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. And so then it is not of him that willeth, Amen. nor him that runneth, yes. but of God that showeth mercy. Amen. So thank Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory. <laughs> As Brother Ron would say, boo devil. Yes. Huh? Come on. This is our children. Yes. Mummies and daddies that have little children. This is what God's going to do. Yes. Amen. He's going to save them to the uttermost. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Ah, you can play something soft. It's some victorious soft song. <laughs> now, there is a paradigm. Anybody else? Tremendous testimonies. Amen. We are his witnesses. Amen. Here you've heard some tremendous ones. Tremendous already. Divine energy walking up these stairs. God bless you, Michelle. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, so, so I wasn't at camp, obviously. Too old. <laughs> um, but the before service... Um, July 27th. Yes. Oh, I mean, everybody knows I was up at the altar. It kind of just happened. Um, but I was really struggling for years, like a, a couple of years mm -hmm. at least, like when the borders closed down. Not at first, but then after. Um, with doubt. And I don't even really know. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't even really know, like, where it came from. Um, I think over time, like, if you're not feeding on the word constantly, things can come in, right? Um, anyways, but I would sit in service, and, like, the ministers would be preaching, like, God loves you, God cares for you. This is just a really basic example. And I would audibly hear, like, in my mind, like, no, he doesn't. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care for you. Like, look at your life. You know, friends have left, or... You know, different things. 
He clearly doesn't love you. He clearly doesn't care. And I was like battling back and forth. Like, no, I don't believe that. Like, I've exactly. seen him moving my whole life, nice. you know. Um, and I would try just to overcome it myself. And anyways, after that service, uh, very following service, I came and not one trace of doubt. Everything that the brothers, you know, everything you said or whoever was preaching, I don't know. Yes. Um, just belief and faith. And I was like, I believe that. And I agree with that. Praise and the Lord. Nothing. Michelle. Like, it wasn't there anymore. So Amen. Totally free. Good luck. Oh, <laughs> Glory. Jack, are you going to say something? You want to come up together? You can, hey, you're just newlyweds, right? very special for me and my wife and um, there's been a couple uh, things that have happened in our lives that God has he's really shown himself and um, we've been living up in the Yukon working and God he just like we'd, we'd have problems with our trailer whatever <laughs> and uh, we were driving down the road and the brakes weren't working they were actually like just full you touch the brakes they'd go full on Pulled over to the side of the road, <laughs> laid my hands on each tire, and drove away. Comp and the trailer worked completely normal. And the Lord just, yeah, <laughs> He just touched the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and so I knew God, He, uh, with our prayers, He He answers those. Amen. So then, like two days later, our fridge stopped working, and so Jess was like, "Oh, the fridge isn't working." So I, I'm trying to fix it for a little bit and I started getting late so I, I went to bed and Jess was like hey the trip still not working whatever and so Jess laid hands on the fridge instantly turned on God heard our prayers again Amen. so coming into camp I knew that no matter what we prayed for God would God would answer us and um, I just knew that I needed God to like the fire of God in me and I just kept hearing uh well, with at the day of Pentecost, there was the people who stayed until the end, and that's who God filled, and that's who God touched. So that scripture kept going through my mind, and it was, I think it was Friday night, and it got to, I think service finished at 10 o'clock, and I knew that it wasn't over yet. And we just stayed, and the presence of the Lord just fell down, and he touched me, and I'm not the same anymore and he touched my wife and it's just the joy of the lord is is with us and i just want to praise the lord because i think as brother david said there was the 10 lepers and only one came back yeah and i want to be that one amen so thank yeah. you lord god bless you Um, yeah, the Lord has been so good throughout the whole camp. It was just everything just matched. Everything flowed together, even with the skits about Esther. And, and I just realized, like, in that skit, how Haman had built that uh, hanging, how do you call it? The gallows for Mordecai, and he got hung on it. And I realized that that's what happens to Satan every time. And it happened last weekend, too. Amen. Um, at the end of Friday night service, I, I felt filled and I felt like the service was so amazing and I was just rejoicing the whole time. But at the end, I was just like, I just heard, I just felt that the Lord was calling me to take a step forward. And I was like, you know, I, I just heard something like go for it to receive the Holy Ghost. And I was like, but I already have the Holy Ghost. Like, but then I was like, well, Satan's not telling me to do that, so not in this atmosphere. So I'm, I just walked forward and I, I just surrendered. I was like, Lord, you know me, you can mold me, you, whatever you want to do with me, here I am, and, and just do it. And then I just came forward with this petition, just like Esther did. Mm -hmm. And so I heard the king's call to the banquet, and I went forward, and I was like, I. Haman has been trying to 
steal away from my people and, and my rights. And I just want to take that back. And then um, this sister came behind me and she just like, she was like, Lord, grant her petition. Mm. And then uh, right away I knew he, like it just came a revelation, like, okay, he granted it. And that was me rejoicing all night and, <laughs> and just thanking the Lord and living the Pentecost. Amen, sister. God bless you, honey. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen, Andrew. Hi. Not really a thing. It's okay. Thing, You're my friend. Uh, <laughs> so, um, for me at camp, I, uh, I came in with a bit of a bitter attitude. I didn't really want to be there. Um, but my family convinced me to come help because it's just something our family does. Right. And <laughs> not that I wanted to, but I was there. So, um, so just coming into senior, um, I still had that better attitude and just coming to service lake from being in the kitchen and that but by saturday i wanted to get out of the kitchen as soon as possible to, to get to service amen and and during that service i just i've been struggling with something in my life for a really long time brother tom you're the first person i ever told that to right and i was struggling with this depression and oppression I'd had on just on my life, just this this void where whatever I put in, it would just it's like a black hole. Right. Any joy, any happiness, anything like that. And I'd just been living with it and hiding it and because I didn't want anyone else to worry about me. I just kept it to myself and and I just asked God during that service, before the prayer, I, I said, give me the strength just to be honest, just to mm, tremendous ask answer. for what I really need. And so I was in the line and I was just asking God to prepare my heart. I noticed like, and just to do something for me. And I noticed uh, that you were taking personal requests unlike other years. And I was like, just really make me ask for the right thing. And so I'm in the line and I, I get up to you and I say, I have this depression on my life. And you said, Brother Andrew, if you're up here, you can't have that depression. And then I was just, I was so confused in the moment because I was like, that's what I'm coming up here for. And, uh, and it took me a while. The devil was really fighting me on that. And it took me a while to... Um, I was just thinking afterwards, the devil was really trying to steal it from me. And a brother came up and I asked God to send a brother, someone to pray for me sure. after. And I don't know who the brother was. Someone came up and prayed with me. I was on the edge of the tent. And then Dan also uh, came after that. But I, it took me a day or two to realize that that void was gone. Amen. It was all gone. <laughs> and Brother Tom, another thing is I was in the line. And that presence, it just, it just struck me in the line. Mm. And I haven't been the same since. Amen, Brother Andrew. Amen. We love you, buddy. Love you, Andrew. Amen. Amen. We come into the presence of the Lord. All the devils have to leave, right? Amen. Hudson. Uh, I'll just quickly make this quick. Uh, you know, I think most people know here how the presence of the Lord came down on Saturday night and so <clears throat> I went in the prayer line uh, I think I, <laughs> I went back and looked and I was in there wa waiting for like an hour and a half and uh, I got to the prayer line and I told Brother Tom I wanted to drive a stake in the ground there Amen. at camp and so afterwards uh, I was just uh, praying and just uh, it was just such an amazing atmosphere like I've never been in such a service like that the, just the spirit of the Lord came and it just like I don't know I was like 
I don't know, just like screaming my heart out for <laughs> some of the burdens that I heard. Um, yeah, just, I heard other brothers praying and I just entered into prayer with them Thank and you. for their needs. It was just amazing. I've never been. It was just a very unique experience, Amen. and I just thank God, God for everything you. that he's done. God bless you. God bless you. Amen, honey. I've got this something special in me. Just want to say thank you, Lord. It was that Saturday night service while Brother David was pre preaching. I could feel the Lord moving in me, right. and I was like, I need to get baptized, but I was like, I'm going to wait for next week Sunday, and just then I heard Brother David say, young people, don't wait, your time is now, <laughs> and I was like, that's for me, <laughs> that's meant for me, Yes. I'm going through the waters. for me too. We are his witnesses. God bless you. Um, before camp, I think the bitter spirit was moving through my household because I've always looked forward to camp. And I'd really wanted to be in the kitchen this year. And uh, Mike and Abigail needed counselors. So I was just really fighting. I didn't want to be a counselor. So I went to camp. And Wednesday, after we had finished cleaning up all the skits, I asked Charity if she would go to Artist Point with me. And all pre-camp, I just, I'd pray, and it was like I was hitting a brick wall, and I couldn't get through. Mm -hmm. So we're on our way up to Artist Point, and I looked at my gas, and it was on empty, and I was like, oh my goodness. So I get to the top, and I thought, I should probably call Dad, let him, like, bring a jerry can up. So Charity was like, yeah, we better call your dad, but I was too proud. So I just kind of got in the car, and we were driving, and it was all the way on empty, 10 minutes before we got to the top, so on the way back, I'm watching my gas gauge go lower and lower. And I was like, well, Lord, you're just gonna have to multiply my gas like you did the loaves and fishes. And I just kind of chuckled. It wasn't really a prayer. And I watched my gas gauge go up. And I made it all the way back to Maple Falls. So then coming into camp, it was a rough start. And thank you for your wisdom. Because I was able to then stay in the Friday night service. And Sister Joanne, thank you for putting our girls to bed because me and Jess were both in the tent very late. We had the youngest crew, and Sister Joanne was kind enough to go up and make sure they were safe and in their cabins. So I went up, and I wasn't really sure how to voice what I needed. Mm -hmm. But you had said, the waters are stirring. What right. doth hinder? Right. And I wasn't sure how to put it into words, and Brother Tim came and prayed with me. Um, and then Brother Andrew came and just said a couple words, and it was just what I had been dealing with, but I didn't know how to express it. Right. And then Brother Michael came and prayed with me over some things and just that night was put me in line for my physical healing the next day but I needed that spiritual healing and the renewal so that was I mean I've never been in the tent till 1 30 a.m before so it was a really special time just in the quietness and Friday Saturday morning brother Andrew had said how his sister Whitney was uh, at the edge of the tent and her dad had walked by and he prayed for her baby, right. and she was healed of all of her stomach conditions. So I've had sensitivities that have come up since I was in my early 20s. It started with lactose intolerance, and then I couldn't eat gluten, and then it was just anything, like onions bother my stomach, everything. So um, a couple months ago, it was so bad, I'd try and lay down, and the acid coming up my throat it was, I was so painful, I couldn't sleep. So I just went forward, and I was like, well, Brother Andrew asked what I was there for. And I never thought it was something to get prayed for before. I thought it was just something I deal with, and it was just life. So I explained it to him, and I've never seen someone's entire face change. And he just looked past me, and he goes, you know, that's a nervous spirit. And I said, yes, because whenever I'm listening to the prophet, he calls out stomach conditions, and he says, it's not a stomach condition, it's a nervous. So I was like, yes, I know that. Um, so this is part of me winning, <laughs> beating the devil over that nervousness because I feel like I could just fall over. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, he was just like, prayed a very simple prayer. But as he was speaking to me, 
I felt that presence come down like I've never experienced before. Mm. And he just prayed a very simple prayer and he said, um, he said, you're healed, do you believe me? I said, yes, I, I believe you. So he goes, when you go home, it's gonna get worse, but never let a negative confession mm -hmm. come out of your mouth. And my mom's always talking to me about, you know, the positive, express the positive. So I went to lunch and I looked at lunch and it was bratwurst and onions. And immediately my heart sunk <laughs> and I was so nauseous. So I told the sister I'd help her with something, so I just left. I was like, oh, I don't need lunch. And when I got to her, she said, no, I want you to eat lunch first. So I was like, well, Lord, you healed me. So I took a big mm -hmm. amount of onions and put it on my bratwurst. And later I went to go tell Amberly what the Lord had done for me. And I realized I hadn't had any acid reflux since lunch. And then that night I went and I had uh, real bread. <laughs> and there was no reaction. Glory. Um, and the next morning there was Olive Garden salad and I always pick out all the onions and all the peppers and I was like, well, Lord, you healed me, so now I can eat it. And I had no reaction Amen. to any of the food. <laughs> I have that in my notes, Tiffany. I have that in my notes. Brother Brown prayed for the sister, and, he's, and she went home, and she kept on confessing it. And her husband said, well, honey, that's good. That's good to have that confession, but, you know, just don't eat it. And Brother Brown said, the high priest only moves by your confession. And God totally healed her, and she did exactly what you did. She ate it, and she ran down the neighborhood. We are his witnesses. God bless you. Well, I didn't really want to come down, but then Tiffany came down, and I know what the Lord did for her at camp, so I have to stand here and testify. I've talked to a few people about this, but in about uh, September or October of 2021, I um, started to struggle with severe anxiety and um, it's not something I really struggled with as badly before but I ended up dropping out of school mm. and struggled with a lot of things and I've had prayer multiple times with the brothers I've gone for counseling sure. and right before camp I started to see it's something that's gone up and down it's got better it's got worse um, but before camp I started to see a difference and mm. I went up in the prayer line primarily for deliverance from fear and anxiety, and I had a list of other things with me as well, but that was primarily what I went up for. And um, I just want to stand here and testify and say that I've seen that change continue. My mind is clearer. I no longer struggle with Amen. severe anxiety attacks. Glory. And um, one of the classes that I ended up dropping out of in 2021, I went back to complete and by God's grace, finished it up yesterday. Amen. So. <laughs> Great testimony. God bless you. Well, I figured I better come up since <laughs> Tiffany and I made a pact to change our language and encourage each other in confession. Um, so just a backstory. So before camp, the last several years, I've been dealing with a chronic illness. And so that has been a huge trial in my life. And so going into camp, I was extremely worried about energy levels and fatigue and like how it would feel. And so he spoke about divine energy. And so I feel like I had to say this as well. Um, going into junior camp, we had went early to help out with the activities and everything like that. And throughout the entire junior camp, I just had like this divine energy <laughs> and supernatural energy, like everyone knows. But um, people that know me and know what I struggle with kept like going, like coming up to me being like, oh, are you doing okay? Like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I feel great. And That's I was fun. like, my eyes were bright and I was like super energetic and everything. So then um, going into senior camp, um, yeah, that even that night that the tent was open till 2 a.m., I was in the tent till literally the, one of the last people to leave till 2 a.m. And I was like feeling great, like feeling totally fine. Um, and so then in senior camp, we were kind of busy helping with everything. And I was like, my main priority was just to be a counselor. Um, and then the Saturday morning, 
devotion. I had gone into church kind of late, like rushing in a little bit because we were helping with stuff. And so then I sat in and I was just kind of thinking like, oh man, I wish I had like more time to prepare for this service. Um, and then the second brother Andrew came to the pulpit, he just said, we will see miracles today. He yes. said, expect the unexpected. Mm. And so I was like, okay, well, that's probably for me. And so um, of like halfway through the service or so, um, like a few people said, then brother Andrew mentioned that lady with the stomach issue. And part of what I'd been dealing with had resulted in major stomach issues. And like I went, he, he talked about how that lady could only eat a certain amount of foods and like different things like that. And so at one point I was down to eating only seven foods, like a very small amount. And so that was really difficult. Um, and so I just, he walked over to the stage after he had just said that and we like locked eyes for a moment. And I just like raised my hand and I said, amen. And I like immediately claimed it for myself. Amen. And so then um, after that, towards the end of the service, he had said a few things that were just like totally my entire situation. And I was like battling with like, oh, I shouldn't go to the front. Like, it's not really that kind of service. And like, you know, I'm supposed to be the counselor. Like I should be praying for my, you know, girls and all of these things. And so then I just had this compelling like feeling to just go to the front. And so I had to wait a while, but I went to the front. And then um, finally Mike directed and brother Andrew over to me and then um, immediately I just started telling him what you know the last few years has looked like for me and how it had been and things like that um, and so then he like someone said he immediately his face changed and so he just like looked off to the side and his eyes kind of rolled back into his head um, and he said when you said when I said that and when you said amen he said I looked over at you and I saw a dark spirit hanging over you mm. and then I saw it leave yeah. And so, yeah. And so that was obviously very impacting. Yes. <laughs> and so then he said, you're already healed. He said, like, you said amen, and you stepped out, yeah. and you confessed it, and you believed it. Amen. So you're already healed. Um, and so I was just like, oh, my goodness, yeah, like, I did have the faith. I do believe. And so he said, you're already healed. And he went over a few things with me, just said, keep confessing it. And, like, it's the same thing, like, it probably will get worse. <laughs> he's like, but keep confessing it. And so then I was like, okay, he's not even going to pray with me. Like, it already happened. <laughs> like, we just, you know, believed, and then I accepted it. And so then that was totally exactly what I needed, just an encouragement. And like the whole rest of the camp, I still had amazing energy and everything like that. So going home, then the devil's definitely been fighting. <laughs> so I'm just like here to confess it and believe it that Amen, I'm completely sister. healed. Yeah. Amen. You are. God bless you. Amen. Come on up, baby. don't know what I'm doing up here, but here we go. The Lord didn't give me the experience that I had without, you know, coming up here. So um, going into camp, I've never been, had such high expectations for camp. Um, there's a lot of things going on for junior and after junior, I was so tired. I'm like, are we still alive over here? <laughs> don't know, but you know, I was tired coming into the services and I was like, Lord, please just give me just a renewal, a refresh like put on my glasses so I can, don't see my squinty eyes and but um Thursday night just completely blew me out of the water I had the expectations that I had and I've never had such high expectations but I didn't even expect how high it would reach um and I know even like the devotion or the the morning like services service, yeah. they're usually just more a, it feels like a devotional and okay lunch at noon and we're gone no, it's no one cared about the food. Everybody was way past noon and everything. So Friday morning, I I just felt the need to go up for prayer just because I was believing for a certain individual and sure. multiple, but essentially for one certain individual. Mm -hmm. And I've never, I feel like we've never been so close to him coming back. And so I, I went up to the front Friday morning. I had Uncle Mike pray for me. I said, this is, this is it. I just need the confirmation. I need the faith. I need to, we need to pray for our family members. Um, and he did. And, and then Saturday morning, what in the world? <laughs> um, I was standing there and, you know, you dismissed. And I saw that Kenzie was at the front, um, and which I know Kenzie and Isabel would have loved to be here today, but they're sure. not here to testify. But, um, 
she was standing at the front and she was just she was just crying out and brother Andrew and uncle Mike were praying with her and I knew everybody had sat down but I just was still standing I didn't really care I was kind of in my own I was in my own thoughts and my prayers and just standing there with my hand raised my eyes closed and all of a sudden I felt like I heard my name and I, I was like and then someone grabbed my hand and it's really startled me but it was Uncle Mike and he said oh come here and him and brother Andrew had made their way down the aisle and I was like what is going on like it just felt like nobody was around and he looked he looked at me and then he looked above me and he said you're a true believer and you've got a light above your head mm-hmm. and I was like okay I've never been told that in my life <laughs> what <laughs> and I heard from multiple people that he once he was done finishing praying with Kenzie that he had looked over down the aisle to me and said do you see that to Uncle Mike there's a light above that woman's head we need to go get it and and he what he when he came to me he said you and who I just prayed for had the same need and he said, so what are you praying for? I said, well, for my brother. And, and he said, I know that. And God knows that. And he is coming back. And it was just that confirmation. And, um, and I, really, I really appreciated that. I feel like we've never Amen. been so close yeah. to having him back. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, we prayed. And I apparently was very loud in my prayer. But I was just crying out. I didn't really care. And I've always been so self-conscious sure. of that. Sure. So I really didn't care at all. And, um, and I, I know he's coming back. I have the, such confidence. And even with Kenzie's faith and Isabel's, my mom's, and all of you praying for us, he is. And there's no doubt about it. And, and, you know, I was talking to Brother Andrew after, just asking him some questions like, after camp had ended. And he said, I didn't even know you two were sisters. But you, I, both, I saw the same need in both of you. And so I really do appreciate it. And, yeah. oh, God bless you. Well, I was really, like, having trouble, like, believing in God. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't do it. It was hard for me. And so in one of the prayer meetings, I just prayed to God, I need to believe in you. This is so hard. I need need you. And so I went into the prayer line, and I was praying for the Holy Ghost. But it wasn't also just that. It was that believe in Him. And... As you were praying, Brother Andrew said, don't be nervous, it's just the angel. And I don't even know if he meant it in the way I got it, but it just showed that the angel was there and his presence just like was really amazing to me. And he just, I walked out of that prayer line differently. (laughs) Amen. God bless you. Everyone knows my burden. Mm -hmm. Prior to camp, things had gotten really bad with my children, and uh, I would be crying all the time, sitting in church crying. Um, not that I disbelieved, I just had a hard, very hard time with it all. And so coming to camp, I, I came in because I wanted to help, and I was in the kitchen watching the prayer line, and I'm like, I really, really want to go in the prayer line. So. Um, Anyway, I had a chance to get up, run out of the, get out of the kitchen and go down there. And um, Brother Tom, I really appreciate it when I came up and you looked right at me. You knew what's for my family. Right. But you said, you said, put down a stake. This is it. This is, this is the time. Don't, don't worry about this no more. Just when the devil comes at you about your family, you just put down a stake. This is it. So um, I took a hold of that, and you told the brothers what I was there for, and they all laid hands and prayed. And as I was going through, I, I, I heard Brother Andrew say, because the devil comes at you. Sure. He says, oh, you wasn't a good mother. You didn't do things good. But I heard Brother Andrew say, you raised your children right. You did a good job. And uh, so after camp, I'd put down that stake. Amen. Sure. And every day I'm thank thank you, Lord, yep. for Shalom's salvation, for Angela's salvation, for Isaac's salvation, for Ruth's salvation, for Esther's salvation. And it's been a real tight post. And I believe they are gonna be here. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. Sister Sherry. God bless you. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> you want to? Sure, I can come down. You can have coffee. Whatever you like, sister. Just a sec. Oh, I'm not going to miss anything. This is my first time to be able to come to summer camp in probably seven years. Wow. And the devil fought viciously with our family medically. And I don't remember if it was Thursday night or Friday night, but I said, I'm going to that meeting. And I just, the devil attacked and it didn't look like it was possible. And so Samuel was gonna stay with me and they were gonna go and I just said, no. I'm not going to allow this. I'm Good for you. Camp. Good for you, Lisa. As you all know, Samuel's been going through a real trial for about a year, mm -hmm. and I know God healed him in those meetings. It doesn't matter what the symptoms show. Um, but Samuel has always served God and gave his heart to the yes. Lord when he was very young. And he felt to get rebaptized mm -hmm. recently. And it was a great victory, but the devil, you know, Brother sure. Tom, he's talked to you multiple times. So that service that I went ahead and pushed through, and by the time I got to service, the symptoms were all gone. Amen. And at some point, Brother David, there were people at the altar, and it wasn't a prayer line. Brother David was praying, and Jer um, Samuel asked Jeremiah if he would go up with him because he's very shy. And Brother David was praying for Samuel. <laughs> And on the way to camp, we prayed as a family, and Samuel said, Mommy, I want to ask the Lord to give me the Holy Ghost. Yes. And I said, Well, honey, I already believe you have the Holy Ghost. And he said, Well, then a refilling. Yes, I'll take it. So he went up. I don't know what he said to Brother David, but mm. Brother David prayed for him. And I have the pillar of fire in my bedroom because someone had preached that that pillar of fire is with you and so you know what your children gaze upon so samuel's grown up seeing the pillar of fire and he said mommy mom he said i don't know what happened he said but i saw a white light and it looked like the pillar of fire mm -hmm. and he said and it went into my heart and this power this divine energy yes power is. went yes. into his heart and he said it was so powerful, I knew that God had either given me the Holy Ghost or he had refilled me Amen. with the Holy Ghost. And you know what? He's not been the same. Amen. And then we went to the prayer line. It was a greater victory. So I just want to thank the Lord for healing me, Amen. for healing Samuel. Amen. 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 <laughs> Are we going to be here all day? You want one more? Short. Okay, Sister Precious. Come on, Mommy. People can see you. I, I was sort of debating whether I was going to sort of share this testimony, but I really want to. Um, I think this year I've sort of realized that camp is not just a moment, it's not just an event. Right. Um, it's, it's a journey throughout the entire year. And specifically, I want to say that, you know, the service before camp, mm -hmm. you were speaking, Brother Tom, and I don't know if you might remember this moment when you looked at me mm -hmm. and you kind of really stopped me in my tracks. And you said, Sister Precious, how God will take somebody from Nigeria mm -hmm. and bring them to university and save them. And it's amazing because in July 27, that was just the three days before you said that, Brother Tom, was nine years since I've been baptized. Mm. And Brother Tom, when you said that, I thought of the love, love of God. You know, there are many times that I felt like quitting, that I felt like just going away. Mm. But when you said that, my heart rejoiced. Amen. And when I went to camp, I was just so filled with God's joy. Praise the Lord. And I knew that God had done something real for me. Amen, Sister Precious. God bless you. That's great. <laughs> sure. There you go. 
Sorry, Brother Tom, I just had to speak. Yes. Um, I had gone into camp with three very strong expectations, and I don't usually write them down, but I did for this camp. Um, And God met all of those expectations, but for sake of time, (laughs) I'm going to take hours to talk about them all. Um, I'll just talk about one. I had gone, and I I had written down that I had, I wanted the Lord to use me at camp. And on the Friday night, um, the altar call for the Holy Ghost came down. And I saw somebody that I wanted to pray with, um, but I didn't go because I was afraid of, like, doing the wrong thing or saying the wrong thing. And somebody else came to pray for that person. And I realized that I often let those opportunities slip by when the Lord says, please go and, and, and pray with someone or speak to somebody. Um, because I'm afraid. And so after the altar had cleared and I just went up and I I wanted to pray and I asked the Lord that he would take that fear from me because I had to let, if I wanted God to use me, I had to let him use me. Mm -hmm. Um, So the the next morning, Saturday morning, um, there was somebody I wanted to pray with and my heart was beating like triple time. (laughs) And I didn't want to go. And I was looking around for somebody else to go because I really didn't want to go. <laughs> and I was like, there's got to be somebody who's better at this. Um, but there wasn't. And so I went up and prayed with that person. And I know the Lord dealt with them. And I know the Lord's going to work on their needs. Sure. Um, but on the uh, night of the prayer night, um, I went up because the Lord dropped really strongly. I wasn't going to go in the prayer line at all. That I needed to go up in the prayer line for that fear. And... Um, when I was about halfway through the line, um, I just was praying, and the Lord put on my heart that if you want to get what you want from this prayer line, you have to believe that I can give it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I went through the prayer line, um, Brother Andrew said, you're going to testify. And then he asked me again, are you going to testify? And I said, yes, I'm going to testify. And, and he prayed with me, and um, Brother David also prayed that the Lord would give me peace. And I can say that the Lord's dealt with that fear, and the Lord's given me peace. Amen, Sister Emily. (laughs) Tremendous. Thank you. I'm quite nervous right now, but I had been struggling with fear, and I had, but not anymore, because I went up in the prayer line, and when I was going through, through brother david me and my mom had actually talked a lot about it and we were like no you fear not and everything and i went through and the one thing i heard very clearly was brother david was like no fear not and then i was like no it's gone so yeah amen sweetheart This is definitely not what I want to do. And I apologize to my family because I haven't even shared with them. I have a very hard time sharing anything. (laughs) Um, Saturday night, I was working in the kitchen. Sherry and I had finished preparing the the snack, and we were just sitting up there wanting to be down, but too tired to want to walk down. And Joel came in. Thank you, Joel. And he said, I want you to come down. Mm. So I came down, and Glenn came to me, and he said, you need to go to the prayer line. And I'd been struggling for years with tinnitus, extremely bad, Mm. 24 hours a day, constant ringing in your Mm. head. And they can't do anything for tinnitus, but God can. Yes. Yes. And he goes, I want you to go get prayed for. And I said, well, honey, I have been prayed for. And he says, but sweetheart, the anointing is so strong on the platform. And I said, okay. And I got in and I thought, Lord, forgive me. And I prayed. It was long line. I was up the tent. I had a while. I said, I want to go through with the right attitude, but I just I wasn't feeling led to be prayed for for my ears. But that morning, Brother Andrew had been speaking about healing. His dad, how great it'd be 
but how much greater is the soul? Yes, yes. And my younger brother's life is such a mess. But my mom died claiming the token for her sons. And I just really felt pressed not to go for me, but to go for him. And I got up there and Glenn started to say what my need was. And I said, I just put my hand on his arm and I said, I do need healing. But healing's a season and my brother's soul needs saved. And brother Andrew, I had my eyes closed and I opened it and he said, look at me and don't be afraid. And I can honestly say I've never seen a look like that on someone. And I knew it wasn't him. And he said, because you didn't ask for it, I give you your healing, your hearing. And he put his arm, hands on my ears, and he said, I give you your hearing. And I believe he did. Amen. And I'm walking in it. Amen. And then he prayed, and he said, Lord, I'm sending this prayer out into the atmosphere. And he said, for two sons. And I was like, Lord, I asked for my brother. And then it came to me. I have two brothers, mm. and they both need saved. And I was standing there for my mother my. to claim that token That's that tremendous. she believed all her life. And I believe Amen, that they're Sean. coming. God bless you. <laughs> tremendous. Amen. And we do. Amen, God bless you, man. So I was pretty nervous sitting in my seat. Yeah. But I wasn't going to miss my chance to praise the Lord. So I've been dealing with this skin disease all over my body for mm -hmm. like the last six or seven months. And even right before camp, I just got it really bad. Like I showed up to the skit on Monday. I just had my hood over my head. <laughs> had a hat on. Right. I had glasses on. Because I was like just so red. Just all over my face. Mm. All, over my, all, my, all over my body. And... I was a, I think everyone that was in Sequoia has seen a miracle. <laughs> yes. So every, every service even before camp, I said, if there's one miracle in this tent, let it be me. Mm. And that was just my prayer all weekend long. And then every service, it was like, boom, that was for me. That was for me. That was for me. Lay your hands on the sick. They'll be healed. Yeah. And then... Brother Andrew talked about the man with the skin disease and he was healed. I was like, boom, that was for me. Yeah. And then Thursday morning, Brother Mike, he's like, where's Gabe Ray Kajroka? That was for you. Yeah. So I think this whole camp, that was, yeah. it was what I needed. Amen. Spiritually and physically. Mm. And um, even Friday, Friday morning, I couldn't even get up for breakfast. I was mm. just like laying on the couch in Sequoia. I was just like... My skin hurt so bad. So I was just laying there. The people were going for choir, and I was like, um, uh, I can't even go. And then just all through the weekend, Brother Mike prayed for me on Friday morning. Yeah. Then I got prayed for Saturday morning. Yeah. Saturday evening. Yeah. So I got more than a double portion, Brother Tom. I got a hundred times. <laughs> so I just want to praise the Lord Amen. for healing me. God bless you, Gary. God bless you. I do too. I do too. All right. This will be the last. Oh, okay, I sorry. just uh, want to give the Lord praise. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be honest, in junior camp, I was just putting before the Lord, He's given me two specific promises from His Word for my family. First for Isaac and Violet, and then for my other boys too. And that was just last year in Kings, uh, first, uh, second Kings um, 8. And um, I just was saying to the Lord in junior camp, Lord, you gave me these promises, but I want to see them fulfilled. And I kept saying that to him, Lord, I want to see it fulfilled. And so then um, senior camp came and um, I was headed, we were all driving. Uh, I can't remember if it was Reed. No, he was Friday. So we were all driving with Serena and we were heading to camp. And I had texted Isaac to let him know we're going to camp, you know, so he knew what was going on. And he said, oh, Violet's in the hospital, Mum. And, you know, 
while it was due on the 20th of August, and this is like um, whatever it was, and I said, uh, it was the third, and um, I said, oh, you're teasing me, thinking he was teasing me. And he didn't respond, so I'm like, okay, I've got to try and find out if this is real. So I'm phoning Charlene, I'm phoning Violet, I'm not getting anyone, then Violet phoned me back. And she said, yes, I've been at the hospital since six in the morning, and this is like going to camp. I says, oh, well, I can't just turn around because we're heading to camp. So I said, Lord, you, you know, you just have to take care of the situation because I'm going to camp. <laughs> so, uh, of course, she was a burden on my heart and I'm in, in the service and, and uh, wonderful service, like just unreal, this whole, the whole camp service. And so anyways, we're heading home and Jay had to drop off Sister um, Rena to home. And then when he came back, I says, I'm going, I'm sorry. We had already um, had been for junior camp, so basically everything was ready. So I just, you know, threw a couple more things in. I said, I'm going to the hospital. It's like one o'clock in the morning. So, um, and so then uh, I got, got there and, uh, you know, Violet, you could see she, she doesn't show tiredness. She doesn't show pain or anything, but I knew she was going through it. And she had been... She, everything went according, like everything, but the baby just would not engage, you know? So she had to, they signed pa uh, papers to say they would go for the C-section. And so then it was like about five minutes, felt like five minutes later, they headed her off. And I said, thank you, Lord, that you held off this yeah, till I was yeah. here. And so, you know, I could be part of this all. And um, cause, uh, her husband's mum's amazing, like for not being a believer, she could almost be a believer. She's just such a wonderful person. And so Violet went in and uh, I was tired by then. So it was gonna be recovery. She had the C-section, the baby was delivered fine and healthy. So I was just laying down on her bed and, um, and I forget what I was gonna say, but anyways, she came back and stuff, and I was like really fighting, like I want to hold the baby first, but Owen's mom, her name is Denise, you know, she's going to want to hold the baby. So I said, Lord, I got to stop this selfishness and let Denise hold the baby first. <laughs> so then, of all things, her husband, Owen, Violet's husband, Owen, had been going through some, I think, anxiety really, but it was heart condition stuff. He ended up in the emergency then and so his mum's with him so I get to hold the baby first <laughs> so for me that was like thank you Lord you know my heart I mean I, I did want to let her hold it but um, anyways but um, Violet you know she's had some surgery and she didn't know if she could breastfeed and this is just a miracle the Lord helped her milk come in and everything um, yeah just God's undertook oh God yeah. honored you Sister Grace thank you okay. Okay, so I'm up here because me and Brielle both said we weren't going to share our testimonies back up in our cabin, and she came up, so I knew I had to. So Brother David said that, um, do you want more of God on his Saturday night service? And I said yes, so I came up into the prayer line asking for more of God, and I came out knowing I had more of him. You've been wanting that for a long time. I guess you. Um, I, I can't believe I'm standing here. I hate being in front of people, but I just want to give God the glory. If the camp was for anybody, it was for me. Um, Life-changing experience. I have my fire back. I have my first love, my joy. And I have my healing Amen. for my skin disease. So yes. um, the devil came back and tried to fight it hard. I mm. flared up as right as I got home, but he's under my foot and I'm healed. Amen, Amen. God bless you. The goodness of God, the goodness of God. Okay. Um, so this is me fighting a cowardly spirit or something. But I just want to thank the Lord um, just before camp. Um, I've just noticed that I was like the word, the word was coming forth and instead of just maybe repenting and believing, it was, instead I was just beating myself up and um, I just could not um, 
maybe accept what the world was saying. I, 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 just, I was just in this gloom. And um, finally, when Brother Michael preached, you can't fake this fellowship. You know, I just came out just desiring that the Lord would just deliver me from a jealous spirit. And so, um, I remember you prayed with me. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just thank the Lord because it was everything that the Lord had witnessed to me personally before. And I knew I was free. And right there while we were praying at the altar, I just felt like, you know, the devil is such a loser because he was lying to me that I was something that I wasn't. Right. And, you know, he's like, oh, you're, you're this and that and the other, but it's not. <laughs> and because he knew he wasn't, he was trying to make me believe I was what I wasn't. And, um, you know, one thing that I've always like God made me believe was um, the difference between me and the devil is that I have hope and he doesn't. Very good. So um, coming to camp, I was still kind of worried, but why am I not free among believers? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, like that um, Friday night, I was there as well and um, just just praying that the Lord would just help me to and just refill me and thank God for any of the sisters that came to pray for me to that the Lord would meet my petition. Um, the next day, that was when I reached out again to you and like, like why, what's going on with me? And, um, you know, like, it was just a little thing that Brother Tom shared with me, you know, like we're a body and um, just give out to the body and not just trying to receive for yourself. And that just kind of changed my perspective to realize that, you know, I'm here not just for myself, but for everybody else. Amen. And um, the next day when I was fellowshipping with some other sisters and I just realized that I was basically fighting um, God when he's trying to help me with different things in my life. Because when maybe I see people share things, I, all I would do is just like, oh, why am I so bad? Why am I so bad? Instead of just realizing, oh, okay, so that's the that's not the right way to do it, okay, then I do it the right way. So something as simple as that, and I just thank the Lord that he just gave me peace at the end of camp, and I left camp knowing uh, my place in Christ, and I just I just had a peace with him, so the Lord. I thank God for that. God bless you. Amen. Well, I know we had... Um, some glorious testimonies here, all of them, always personal, always special. We had a prayer line and we had people come up second time. And I wasn't born yesterday. And it reminded me of China, Brother Murphy. And uh, Brother Ron was spent, and I think it was probably close to two and a half, three hours. And I'm spent. Brother Murphy's just about comatose and exhausted to the point of really passing out. And uh, I turned to Brother Ron. I said, I might not understand what the brothers and sisters are saying, but I said, I think this is their third time through. And he, and he just turned around to me. It's very sweet. And he says, well, wouldn't you? <laughs> so for those that came two times, God bless you, wouldn't you? And I, I, it was a special time for our church. It was a special time that we can rejoice this morning. Little, little message. We are indeed his witnesses. And I'd just like to pour a testimony before the Lord and a thanksgiving. I know the Lord's done something very special for each one. But if God did something special for you, I'd like you to stand. Is that not humbling? <laughs> that our God would hear our prayers. Oh, he's amazing, isn't he? Amazing. We give him all the glory. I'm humble. Humbled in his presence. And I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy. These are tears of joy. Okay. Tears of joy that God can do something so special for his children. 
I am so thankful. God bless you. Uh, help me, Ryan. I love, I love you, Lord. couple of men behind me seeking the Lord's face and yielding to his spirit get the right man behind the pulpit it's Brother Tom got a buddy over there every activity every kitchen meeting 
every little thing we do we look to the Lord make sure it's the right atmosphere it's got the right spirit it's got the right tone so I do thank you for gifts of my heart I was blessed too let's thank him Lord, so often through camp, I found myself saying, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jake, Lord God Almighty, God of Moses, God of Paul, God of William Bran, I guess it's time for us to say, our God. Indeed, you are wonderful, Lord Jesus. That name, Lord Jesus, paid a price at Calvary, Lord. We can stand here as a people, Lord, lifted up in the pits of hell as a world that's so dark and dismal, Lord. Here you have young people, Lord, that can stick up their hands and say, God is good. Jesus is alive. He still changes. He still deals with hearts. He still saves the lost. He still heals the sick, Lord. I thank you from the depths of my heart, Lord. Words don't do it justice at all. Words will never fall. But Lord, everyone that put their shoulder to the wheel to make that little atmosphere pleasing to you, words brother Biscoll used one time smile of approval indeed lord we thank you for your smile of approval upon the camp upon everybody yielding themselves and we will witness lord jesus lord your the commission was to go into the world preach the gospel we can be living testimonies for your kingdom for your glory for what you've done what you are doing lord jesus so we thank you for this moment we thank you for this morning the time and Lord, most of all, we just ask that you would anoint us in this end day, Lord, to, to, to fill and to do the purpose that you have placed us on the earth for. One last soul, one special person, one kind word, one word of advice, one word from your scriptures that would ignite that seed, Lord, to, till we come to its fullness, Father. So we thank you for the men of God here. It's a privilege to be part of the, the church here, Lord, the body, Lord, and, and to know, Lord, that, that that drive, that unction that you placed in us is not just for here. It's for the entire world to get this message that William Branham so loudly proclaimed, you using his voice, that you are here amongst us. You are with us, Father, and we thank you for that. Jesus, in your precious name, Go with us in the afternoon. May this special presence be amongst everyone, Lord, as we share your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Stay in this atmosphere. Rejoice. God's done much for you. Thank him. Thank you. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you all.